Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Kasani Balachandra. Good evening. I'm Clifford Richards. First of all, we will take a look at the headlines. The President emphasizes that the steps taken to use organic fertilizer for a healthy generation will not be reversed. Three vaccines approved for emergency use will be brought to the country within the next two weeks. Police take into custody a private bus which tried to violate inter-provincial travel restrictions. The national television brings another special drama series for the high-quality entertainment of hundreds of thousands of viewers. The UK Health Secretary resigns, accepting he violated quarantine regulations. Moving on to the stories in detail. President Gothabe Rajapaksha says that steps taken to use organic fertilizer for a healthy future generation will never be reversed. The president has emphasized that farmers will not be allowed to face difficulties when implementing this program. The president mentioned this when he called on the Mahasangha, including the Mahanayaka of the Askiri chapter today. Well, the president went to Kandy this morning to visit the Mahasangha including the Mahanayaka of the Askiri chapter, the most venerable Varkhagoda Sri Nyanarathana Thera. Expressing his views before the Askiri Mahanayaka Thera, the president said that farmers in many areas are suffering from non-communicable diseases, including kidney disease, due to the use of chemical fertilizer. He said that the chemical fertilizer causes a huge damage to the environment. More than $400 million have to be spent annually to import chemical fertilizer. The president pointed out to the Mahasangha that that amount can be provided to the local farmers by using organic fertilizer. The president said that state officials did not hesitate to take decisions before 2015 and as a result, a major development of the country could be effected. However, the president pointed out that under the previous government, certain officials had to undergo various pressures, including imprisonment on false charges. Therefore, the president said that those officials have become afraid and hesitant to take decisions when implementing present government's development plans in fear of future punishments. Therefore, the President has disclosed before the Mahanayaka Thera that disruption of many activities in the country is a regrettable situation. The President also briefed the Mahanayaka Thera about the COVID vaccination program. The Askiri Mahanayaka Thera commended the program of the President for the benefit of the country while successfully controlling the COVID pandemic. The trustee of the Muthiangan Raj Mahavihare, the Venerable Dr. Muruddeni Dhammaratana Thera was present on this occasion. President Gotabe Rajapaksha visited the Anunayaka of the Askiri Chap, the Venerable Venerue Upali Thera, at the Askiri Dadigevi Judge Mahavihare. He also appreciated the program of the President and invoked blessings on him. The Venerable Dr. Godagam Mangala Thera of the Askiri Mahachapta was present on this occasion. The President also called on the Anunayaka of the Askiri chapter, the Venerable Anamadue Dhammadassi Thera, and received his blessings. Thereafter, the President visited the Registrar of the Askiri chapter, the Venerable Dr. Madagama Dhammananda Thera, and exchanged views with him. The President also visited the Deputy Registrar of the Askiri chapter, the Venerable Narampanave Ananda Thera. The President briefed him about the present program of the government. The Mahasangha, including the chief prelate of the Kapitiagoda Siri Vimala Thera, chanted Sethpirith and invoked blessings on the president who visited the Raja Pona Rame Devar Nilime Dhala, Secretary of the Ministry of Buddha Sasana, Professor Kapila Gunavardhana, were present on this occasion. The State Minister, Prof. Channajai Sumana, says Sri Lanka will get three vaccines approved for emergency use by the World Health Organization within the next two weeks. Accordingly, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines produced in the U.S. and Sinovac vaccine produced in China are scheduled to be received by the country. The state minister said that necessary measures are being taken to launch Sinovac vaccine as a final product in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka Foreign Employment Bureau said that the government has decided to give COVID vaccines for all those who are living abroad for employment. 
Accordingly, persons with employment contract, visa and the appointment letter are scheduled to be given the vaccine. Further information can be obtained by calling over the hotline number 1889. A total of 3,453,960 doses of vaccines have been administered so far. Health authorities say 35,864 doses were given yesterday. The second dose of the COVID Shield vaccine has been given to 50 persons yesterday. 30,795 have been given the first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine yesterday. 4,957 have been given the second dose of the Sinopharm vaccine yesterday. 62 persons have been given yesterday the second dose of the Sputnik V vaccine. Vaccination took place successfully today at several areas. 1,245 COVID patients were found today. 2,158 left hospitals and treatment centers today after completely recovering from the virus. Director General of Health Services said that 39 COVID deaths were reported yesterday. National Transport Medical Institute says its services will recommence tomorrow under the health restrictions announced by the government. Steps have been taken to provide services only for clients who have reserved time from the e-channeling service. The institute said that services will not take place at Verahara, Polo, Narwa, Nuarelia and Kalutara branches. The Immigration and Immigration Department has taken steps to issue passports from the Batramulla main office and from Mathara, Waunia, Kandy and Kurunagala regional officers only for a limited number of customers. Further information can be obtained from the national television website www.runews.lk. 361 have been taken into custody during the 24 hours ended at 6 a.m. today for violating health guidelines. 44,216 have been arrested so far in connection with the offence. Kandy headquarters police took into custody today a private bus which tried to transport passengers from Kandy to Colombo violating travel restrictions. It is reported that the bus transport passengers from Kandy to Halalua. Railway General Manager Gamni Sanviratna said that steps have been taken to increase train services tomorrow. And now a brief look at uh, the global situation with regard to the pandemic. Russia has reported its highest daily COVID-19 cases of the year as the country grapples with a sharp spike in infections that has brought new restrictions in some regions. Meanwhile, the rise of the Delta variant has stoked fears of new waves of the virus in many parts of the country. The highly contagious Delta variant is driving a surge in South African COVID-19 infections while testing the capacity of hospitals and forcing authorities to mull tighter restrictions. The hardest hit country in Africa recorded 18,700 new infections yesterday, reportedly the highest daily figure since January. The country is in the thick of its third wave. The continent's worst affected nation in terms of coronavirus cases and deaths accounts for roughly a third of the confirmed infections and more than 40% of the deaths recorded across Africa. The South African government is expecting that the peak of the third wave would surpass that of the second wave in January when more than 21,000 new daily cases were recorded. Meanwhile, India witnessed a marginal increase in the new coronavirus cases as it added 50,040 infections over the last 24 hours while deaths of COVID-19 rose by 1,258. The country's overall caseload now stands at 30.2 million, while the total fatalities are at 395,000. Also, 51 cases of Delta Plus variant of the coronavirus have been detected across 12 states in India, with Maharashtra reporting the highest number of 22. Russia confirmed 20,538 new coronavirus cases, the highest number since January, and 599 deaths today. Moscow recorded 6,723 cases and 114 deaths. A new daily mortality record. More than a third of the new infections have been reported in Moscow. Meanwhile, former UK Secretary Chief Sajid Javid has replaced Matt Hancock as the new health secretary. The UK health secretary, Matt Hancock, who has led the country's response to the coronavirus, resigned yesterday, a day after apologizing for breaching social distancing rules with a colleague. The UK recorded 18,270 new coronavirus infections yesterday, the highest 
daily rise since February 5th and 23 deaths. Cases have been rising in Britain for the last month, but vaccinations appear to have kept the daily death toll at a lower level. Sydney, down under in Australia's largest city, has begun a two-week lockdown following an increasing cluster of cases of the highly infectious coronavirus Delta variant in the region. Australia has been more successful in managing the pandemic, but the country has confronted an increasing number of small outbreaks in recent months. In Sydney, more than 110 COVID-19 cases have been reported since a member of an international flight crew tested positive in mid-June to the highly contagious Delta variant. Meanwhile, Bangladesh registered 77 additional deaths from the coronavirus, taking the death toll to 14,053, with new hotspots outside the capital Dhaka, particularly in the border districts along India. A total of 4,334 new infections have been recorded in the country, taking the caseload to 813,100 with the daily positivity rate of 22.5%. Bangladesh authorities have suggest, suggested imposing a 14-day complete shutdown to prevent the further spread of the virus. In more local stories, farmers in many areas have paid their attention on producing organic fertilizer and to use organic fertilizer for their crops. Creation of new job opportunities have also been reported related to the production of organic fertilizer. Steps have been taken to cultivate Talunna agriculture and dairy farm in the Gore district, which has been abandoned a few months ago. It is significant to note the successful cultivation using organic fertilizer despite the climate condition in the area. The farm has been able to provide new employment opportunities for 15 farmers in the area. The project, which is being implemented by the Southern Province Industrial Development Authority, according to the President's Vistas of Prosperity Policy Statement, produces fertilizer needed in the farm system. Itself. Apart from vegetable and fruit cultivations, cultivation of turmeric and animal husbandry also take place at the farm. Leaves of various trees are also being used for herbicides. Well, it has been decided to give the highest value in the history to the sportsmen and women who are taking part in the Olympic Games on the instructions of Minister Namal Rajapaksha. Nearly 38 million rupees have been estimated as the expenditure in this regard. Olympic Games are scheduled to commence on the 23rd of next month. Local sportsmen and women will get a daily allowance of $40 and a special allowance of $10,000 during their stay in Japan. It has been decided to provide them with business class airline facilities. The sports minister has instructed to provide $5,000 and a daily allowance of $40 for coaches. Nine sportsmen and women, 10 coaches and 8 officials are scheduled to attend the Olympics. Seven sportsmen and women, including five for shooting, horse racing, gymnastics, badminton and judo and two for swimming, have qualified for this year's Olympic Games from Sri Lanka. Sports Minister believes another two will represent Sri Lanka in athletics and weightlifting. Sports Minister Nama Rajapaksha said that he accepted the invitation to attend the Olympic Games as special invitee and he will bear the expenditure personally. About 11,000 are taking part in the Olympic Games and they will compete in 33 games at 42 stadiums. The Olympic Games is scheduled to be held from the 23rd July to the 21st of August. Minister Vimal Viravansa says that steps have been taken to set up 20 advisory councils covering all main industries with the aim of strengthening and promoting local industries. The cabinet approved the proposal last week. It has been found that lack of coordination between Ministry of Industry, Ceylon Industrial Development Board, other state institutions and representatives of the industrial sector for a long time has led to problems. It has contributed to create problems when compiling policies related to the industrial sector and implementing them. Minister Vimal Viravansa said that as a solution, steps were taken to establish 20 advisory councils for proper coordination. Accordingly, 20 advisory councils for main industries are scheduled to be set up consisting of experts at chambers of commerce, federations, universities, research institutions and the relevant industries. 
Sri Lanka Rupani Corporation has scheduled to telecast a new Korean drama series, Saim Dang, dubbed in Singhala for quality entertainment of hundreds of thousands of viewers. The Korean drama series Sujata Deni, which was telecast in 2012 over the national television, received a high response from local and foreign viewers. Actress Lee Yon A, who depicted the main Changumi character in that drama, is also the main character of the new Sign Dang series. The national television has received the Korean drama series as a donation from her. The relevant memorandum of understanding was signed between the two countries recently at Seoul, Korea. Sri Lanka's ambassador in Korea, Dr. Saju Mendes, actress Lee Yong A, chief executive officer Byung Jung of creative leader Group 8 Limited, which produces the series, were present on this occasion. Saim Dang is now being dubbed into Singhala. Saim Dang tells the story of another woman who went after her targets courageously, yet lost between two souls. National Information and Communication Technology Telecommunications and Mobile Telephone Services Provider SLT Mobitel has further enhanced its services. SLT Mobitel says that the steps have been taken to meet the requirement of data demand, which has doubled since the beginning of the pandemic. SLT Mobitel says it has invested 25 billion rupees annually to develop high-speed broadband network and 4G connections during the past few years. The investment has been made to meet the data demand, which has shown a growth of 30% whenever the country was closed down due to the COVID-19 pandemic and also to provide a speedy, extensive service for customers who use internet services. SLT Mobitel has also taken steps to enhance communication connections where there is a low coverage. The road which sunk near Kutmale Dam was open today for traffic after renovations. Nearly 25 million rupees have been spent for renovations. The road sunk on 25th May due to a damage to a pipe which discharged water inside the room. Maha Valley engineers confirmed that it has no impact to the dam of the reservoir. The road was opened today in less than one month after renovations. A group of people, including State Minister Siripala Gamlath and Anuradha Ratna, were present on this occasion. Well, we have a story of an unusual, unexpected visitor. A large crocodile has entered a house at Habaruna 15th milepost area this morning. Officials of the Meneria National Wildlife Park captured the crocodile and released it to the wildlife park. Well, that's the eight feet long crocodile that entered the house at around 5 a.m. It is reported that the crocodile lives in Habarana, Marketshire Tank. Villagers say that the tank is dried up at present. Officials of uh, the Minadia National Wildlife Park and uh, Ganeval Polar Wildlife Office captured the crocodile and released it to uh, the Rambaville area of the Minadia National Wildlife Park. And that's the news for you tonight. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night. Good night.